Okay. Yeah. Uh, I call to order the March 23rd, 2022 meeting of the MWPA Citizens Oversight Committee. Let's call the roll. Kingston Cole. Here. Larry Chu. Larry's here. Here. Lucy Dilworth. Here. Larry Minicus. 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 Oh, here. Minicus. Here. Okay. I don't see Mark. He's absent. Rebecca Suggs. Here. <laughs> Your name is so Michael. easy. We all have problems with it. <laughs> yeah. Michael. Michael's not in attendance. Jennifer Howard. Pat Randall. Here. So we have six. We have a quorum. Thank you. We have a quorum. So, Jennifer. Okay. Um, so, do we have any agenda adjustments? Okay. Seeing none, we move to open time for public expression, but I don't see any public. Yeah, we have uh, three people. Oh, okay. At this time, uh, you could you if you would like to speak to the board on anything that is not on the agenda please raise your hand any citizens i see no hands raised okay all right then um let's go on to the executive officer's report and take it away <laughs> Great, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Lori, would you mind letting okay. me share? I have just a couple of slides to share here. So far, oh, there we go. There you go. Thank you. Okay, are you able to see a slide here? Yes. Yeah. Great. Um, so I'm just gonna go over a few things. Um, so first and foremost, we're really excited because we're going to grow. Um, we uh, just closed uh, the recruitment for a management analyst that closed on the 16th. We've um, been very happy to have Lori's help, but Lori is temporary. So we are looking for somebody to fill that position um, longer term. And that person will help with agendas and clerking, et cetera. Um, we're excited about that. Uh, we're going to touch base with regional government services and find out who applied and start going through those applications. We're also going to be, uh, we just started um, our recruitment for our first vegetation management specialist and um, that recruitment went live on the 16th and that position is really for the chipper program. So managing the chipper program and all those contracts and interactions with the public. Uh, managing those crews. And um, so we're excited to start that. We're also going to be um, recruiting for the grants specialist position, hopefully in April, we need to retool that position a little bit. Originally, that was going to be a contract position, but now it's going to be uh, a position with the, within the MWPA per uh, updated labor code requirements. So we're really excited to expand the team. We've really benefited from having our Grizzly Corps fellows, our two recent college graduates help us out, Josh and Maria, um, but those positions are temporary and they will um, have to depart in July. So we'll be sad to see them go. Uh, we also put in an application for two more Grizzly Corps fellows for the following season. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then I also wanna touch on the, um, Fiscal year 21-22 um, projects that um, required environmental compliance, just as an FYI in terms of progress there, around 24 core projects were identified for needing environmental compliance. We've now finished environmental compliance, at least the CEQA portion for 18 of those. And so, and we're working through the last few. Um, one of those 18 projects also requires a permit from um, the Coastal Commission because it involves roadside vegetation management within the coastal zone. So uh, we're working on that as well. Um, one of those projects that I mentioned that's in progress is the Greater Ross Valley Shaded Fuel Break. 
So I wanted to cover that just briefly since we had a big um, public meeting. So the Greater Ross Valley Shaded Fuel Break, hopefully some of you got to attend the public meeting that we just held on the 10th. Um, so as you may uh, have surmised already, that was included in the 21-22 work plan uh, within Central Marin. And um, we it's it's a 38 mile long shaded fuel break that would occur adjacent to homes and neighborhoods in the greater Ross Valley area. So that includes city of Larkspur, city of Mill Valley, town of Fairfax, town of Ross, town of Corte Madera, town of San Anselmo and Kentfield. And uh, most of those activities would take place between 100, 200 feet away from those structures. Um, but would also, um, in some places, extend out to 300 feet. We're covering in terms of environmental compliance to 300, but most of the time it would be more like 200. Um, there's some flexibility really to tailor the project according to the conditions on the ground and uh, the landowners involved. So, you know, for example, working with Marin County Parks and Open Space and making sure what we're doing is consistent with their goals as well. So, um, you know, the idea with a shaded fuel break, of course, is to maintain canopy and keep that shade and really suppress weeds underneath it. A lot of this work is really hand crews pulling broom, um, cutting broom, uh, limbing up trees, things like that. A um, little bit of prescribed herbivory, um, a little bit of mechanized work um, in a couple of spots. Um, things like that. Uh, we actually just met with Cal Fire uh, this afternoon to just go through the project and go through kind of our environmental compliance documents so far and make sure that they were on board and we felt and they felt like we were on um, on a good track and lots of thumbs up and and kudos so we were very excited about that we're using cal fires california vegetation treatment program or cal vtp process there's a certified program eir for that and we're using that um, process you tear off that document and comply with all of the requirements within that document it's quite a process it's pretty new and so we're excited to be one of the first agencies to do that so our public meeting included maybe 70 75 members of the public plus those of us who were presenting we sent out a whole lot of postcards to people around 1700 postcards to the public um, in the project area and um, had a main presentation plus three breakout rooms to really focus in on certain subjects, vegetation management activities, modeling, mapping and methods, and then the environmental review process. So uh, we felt like- Sorry, sorry to interrupt, Max Perez is, is waiting to be brought on, if you can do that. Sorry, mm -hmm. carry on, Anne. Yes, please. Um, so that was kind of the, the format we felt like the breakout rooms were a good way to um, kind of reduce the size of, of the folks in the audience so we could have more Q&A and conversation. So that really seemed to work well. Um, we have a project page on our website um, that should be pretty easy to find if you search under um, goal or zone, you should be able to find that project. And that includes maps and um, project description, um, the slides and the presentations, um, videos from, from that public meeting. And so, um, and even a KMC file that you can download into your Google Earth um, so you can check out the project area. Um, so we were pretty excited about that. And uh, we felt like it was a good uh, format um, I want to just close with, um, you know, put on my mark hat a little bit and talk about the conditions on the ground right now. Um, so drought.gov is a great source of information regarding the drought. Um, we are certainly not in great condition, in great shape right now in Marin County or really anywhere in California. The whole state is, uh, is under drought conditions. Um, about 93% of the state is in at least a severe drought right now, including Marin County, and that means a longer fire season, a higher burn intensity, dry fuels, and large fire spatial extent. 
So this is the driest year to date, just January and February we're talking about. So far in all of the 128 years of record keeping, and that puts us about 13 inches below normal rainfall for our region. So that's not great news, but the good news is that we're doing a lot on our part to try to um, mitigate fire risk. And so we're, we're excited about that, even if we have some doom and gloom in the forecast. Um, looks like there might be a little bit of rain coming in the next week, but we'll see. So that's it for me. Okay. Thank you. Um, we take public comments. This time, anybody would like to speak on the executive uh, report, please raise your hand. I see none at this time. Oh. <laughs> I, I have a question for Ann, um, the vegetation management specialist. I mean, what did, what is he, I mean, it sounds like he's going to be very much out front and have to be very accomplished, not, not just a manager of crews, but be, to be the public face. What are the requirements of educational and otherwise for the position? Um, this position and, in particular will be focused on the chipper program. Okay. And so we'll be managing crews and schedules and contracting and we'll need to be really good with the public. Yeah. Um, and so answering lots and lots of questions, um, you know, future positions could be and, you know, they have not necessarily been approved or budgeted for yet, um, could include work that would um, support implementation of projects. One of the needs that, of course, comes up every year is uh, nesting bird surveys. I spent, I don't know, 18, 20 years doing nesting bird surveys and uh, teaching young biologists how to do nesting bird surveys. And so that's something um, that we can we can accommodate and we can add uh, to the skill set of whoever applies for future jobs. Um, I don't anticipate this person helping out with that workload, but uh, potentially if, if the need arises and their workload um you know has a pause then uh, i would definitely jump on that and see if i could get um help with some of that work but um some of the future positions um could require some uh background in biological resources um such as birds you know a, a knowledge of local plants would be helpful um, a knowledge of environmental compliance kind of processes would be helpful but i think these project or these positions are um a little bit more entry level in some of the other positions out there, and we'd really like somebody to to grow with us. Okay, thanks. Okay, I have one question. Yeah, hi Larry. Quick question. Hi, hi Ann. Um, with the positions that you have had open, um, are you getting several um, applications for them? Are, are you guys happy with the amount of applications you're getting? Maybe that's a better way to put it. Yeah, I think so. I don't have the final tally for the management analyst, um, but I know that uh, from what I've been told, we do have several qualified candidates who've applied, so we're feeling pretty good about that. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? So we'll move on to the consent calendar and the opportunity for public comment will occur prior to the committee discussion. So any members of the public want to make um, any comment? Please you raise your hand at this time if you'd like to make a comment on the consent calendar. I see none, thank you. Okay, in which case um, we have the, does anybody want to make a motion to approve the minutes or does anybody have want to make a comment on the minutes? Um, I read them. I'll, I'll move to approve. Thank you. And Thank seconded you. by Kingston. Second. second. Yeah. So uh, would we just do all those in favor? Is that the way it works? No, it has to be um, a roll call. A roll call vote since we're doing a teleconference. Okay. Okay. Cole, uh, Kingston Cole. Yes. Larry Chu. Aye. Lucy Dilworth. Yes. Larry Minicus. Yes. Max Perry? Yes. Beyond, yes. Rebecca Suds? Yes. Michael's not here. Jennifer is still absent. And Pat Randall? Yes. Uh, unanimous vote by those attending. Thank you. Good. All right, then. So now we're moving on to committee reports. Um, 
And we'll start with the monitoring assignment reports. Does anybody have anything they'd like to share about the recent meetings? Kingston. Yeah, Larry, Larry Chu, it's okay if I do this? All right. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Um, number one, the audit is not audit is not finished, all right? They have more requests than they could respond to. Uh, we don't know how many. Um, secondly, they, they've applied a 3% cost of living adjustment, which is permitted by the MWP, by, by Measure C, to next year's budget, okay? The, the, the actual inflation rate for the, the, the Bay Area in, in 2021 uh, was 5.2%, but there's a, they can only do 3%. That's the max they can do. So it's three percent, or or the cost, or the cost of living adjustment for the Bay Area, whichever is less. Okay, um, so that was that's been added to it. They came up with a draft budget framework um, in 2021-22. Um, the budget was 19.6 million as an estimate. In actual with revenues that came in, it was 19.9 uh, million. Um, Projecting for next year, 2022 to 2023, you add the 3% cost of living adjustment and the budget projected budget is 20.5 million. Um, it was just in discuss, in discuss so no, it was just an a, a action item, nothing that had to be voted on. Um, and staff has said that there, there's budgets within those budgets. And the 60% is taken care of the 20%, 20%. All that's, there's separate budget items. Um, lastly, I, I, Mark was talking about new headquarters, um, and it seems maybe, and you can fill it in, but Rin Common seems to be the, the new location that you may be moving into, okay? So I don't have the details. I didn't, I didn't write down all the details. So. so just to give a little, this is the finance committee. Um, yes. Report, just yeah, to yeah, right, right. Give that. But the money, the money, where the money is. That's, yes, yes. Um, so is when when would the move take place if it's if it's going to happen? Yeah, Anne knows more than I do. Oh. <laughs> uh, just a little bit more. Um, if if it does happen, it would be after uh, the start of the next fiscal year. Uh, the Marin Commons seem to be the lowest cost per square foot um, of the options that that Mark was looking at. Um, it also includes meeting space that. It, could accommodate a 17 member board and all of the committees. That's an unusual thing to find. Um, the cost, so once um, you know, COVID restrictions ease and we start meeting in person, we'll start incurring a lot of costs associated with finding a meeting space large enough to accommodate everyone. Um, I know the Board of Supervisors Chambers is um, well over a thousand dollars per meeting. Um, so each um, you know, month we would be we would be incurring a lot of cost associated with those. Um, so that is part of the calculation as well. Um, it's definitely not a done deal yet. Um, Mark's still working with them on on that and uh, looking into timing and and uh, paperwork. And I think that will be um, you know those decisions will be beyond my pay grade. So I have a question. Um... I know that I think it's Larkspur has made a decision to meet in person, but also provide um, remote access to the public. Um, mm -hmm. Is that something that the MWPA is going to be looking to do? Yes, and this uh, meeting space can actually accommodate that. And that was part of the calculation as well. Uh, we would be um, hiring somebody to help set that up. We have um, heard from multiple sources that it's actually uh, technically a bit challenging to make that work well. Yeah. Um, so uh, yes, that's that's definitely in the plans. Okay, good. Uh, any, any other questions? Any other committee reports? Um, I, I, oh, go ahead, please, Rebecca. Uh, if, is anybody else giving a report from the board meeting? No, nope. I was, uh, please. Oh, you I were going to do that, Larry? I, I was just going to speak to the Sonoma Technologies. Um, well, company. why don't you do, I'm just going to speak about the Stanford project. So if you Perfect. want to. Okay. So I, I, you want to go first, please? Sure. Uh, the, um, so for the last year or so, we've had a Stanford 
team of students, graduate students, working on doing a report about the um, establishment of the MWPA and the first year or so of business um, so far. The student who's now working on it, Mary Powell, gave a presentation at the board meeting um, about the project. She didn't actually give the report. However, the report was part of the board packet and is in the public record. Um, I'd encourage you all to take a look at that. Um, the report will be made public shortly. And then um, the project will continue. Uh, there will be students assigned and they will continue to work on what does the M MWPA accomplish going forward. One of the reasons that Stanford is so interested is the MWPA is not set up governmentally like anything else in the state of California, we think in the country. Um, and so they're looking at the construct of a JPA. How does that fit in with collaboration, resilience, uh, effectiveness, efficiency? And Stanford is quite interested in all of that. Um, they imagine this coming out of Stanford as a report that other counties can use to do this kind of collaboration among jurisdictions to get the job done, whatever the job is, and especially around wildfire management at the moment, which is, pardon the pun, a hot ticket in the state of California. So you will likely see a lot of attention coming out of this. Um, in, in public coverage, uh, in media, we think, we hope. Um, so our board, MWPA board, and the Stanford team working on this are probably going to be in uh, communication about this going forward and certainly on the release of the report as it goes public. And I would love to say that Rebecca is very shy and not uh, talking about her role in making all of this happen because I think it's really because of Rebecca and Stephen Keese that uh, this all came to be. And uh, I was very impressed by the report. I was almost in tears when they were talking about people from Portugal and all kinds of other places that might be hearing about this. So yeah. uh, kudos to Rebecca kudos. for getting Yay. this going. Thank you, but project management is about what I did. No, 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 no. Take the gold you. star. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> hey, Larry. Yeah, and, and Rebecca, I, I think some of the board members felt that there was still some filling in to do, and there was a question whether Mary could do the filling in. For example, what happened before the MPA, MWPA really formed and the roles of some key people back then, such as Bruce, who really was on his own and hired Mark and all of that. And, and just some of the secret sauce that still needs to be added, I think is a, a nice way of putting it. That um, there, there were um, two comments that we, that they, Mary and Bruce and Mark considered adding into the report and mm -hmm. they're likely going to hold off, not likely, they're going to hold off on adding those in until after the report is made public. They're gonna save that for uh, version two. We think it's right. So that's it, what it, they were saying. There's going to be like a ver that's what I was getting at is that there was talk of doing a version two. Yeah, they'll continue on with the next stage of the project. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because there, there are pieces here, specific people like Mark, like Bruce, like Anne, you know, where you're working with a skeleton crew, and, and that's in a way your secret sauce. If you have the right, when you have the right people, you get a lot done. And I'm kind of paying you a compliment here, Anne, you know, because you're talking a $19 million budget here and you, ha you had really two people, you know, you have two people. It's, it's remarkable, really. And uh, I didn't really mean to get into, but uh, accolades all around. And just, just briefly on the Sonoma Technologies um, contract, there's a million dollars already 
uh, allocated towards this and the board allocated another $400,000 and Anne will probably be able to say more to this than I can. And that this is an evacuation ingress egress study, which will be very important, you know, in um, getting people out safely and saving lives and, and property. And uh, it's good to see it coming uh, to fruition, this, this, this part of it. And that's my report. Okay, um, so before we just move into the items B, C, and D on the agenda, um, I was thinking each each one of the those reports from the committee would be covering a certain portion of the report as it's been drafted and put together into one document. So. Um, uh, I would propose that each committee um, use, uh, use the, the document to discuss um, what, their, what our annual statement is going to be. So we'd sort of go through it that portion by portion, if that works. Um, I hope you all have had a chance to read it um, and to um, have got some input. It's very much of a working document. It's got it's got data missing. It's got questions in it. It's um, it's got you know, flow issues, but it's really the skeleton of what we are going to be saying. Um, and this is uh, the, the committee's opportunity to sort of speak up now if, with, about the direction and the tone and the coverage of what the report is doing. So um, should we should we start by the Transparency Committee uh, report as, as it's covered in the, in the annual report draft. It's fine by me. Okay. I don't know whether, do we want to get it up on the screen or maybe- It's on, it's on page 15. Okay, if any, if, did people, anyone print it out? Well, why don't you just talk? Yeah. Um, Actually, this, I mean, most of this is exactly what was presented to everyone mm -hmm. um, in, in a couple of informational reports we, as when we, when we ran the committee. I mean, the first part, a slight rewrite on the front end about what, what, we're trying, what we're trying to do to ensure trust citizens must be able to access information, ask questions, understand the past, present, and future of an organization, et cetera. Um, what we're basically saying is we... we we as a committee monitored all of the activities or of govern of the governance of of, of the of the MWPA. Attended all the meetings, the retreat, everything else, um, and we essentially found they were in full compliance with the Brown Act, as amended by the pandemic, you know, the, the allowing people to access things remotely. Um, everything was fine. Everything was done well. Staff were doing the correct. Uh, made all the right moves, um, and it's a recommendation in this section is we, we don't really have any. We, we, there's no improvements. It looks like it's, it, as if anything, things are moving more smoothly as we go into year two. Um, we went to the website, and I got, I got to say, everyone was. I mean, Stephen Keys was on board, and many comments. Um, you can read through it, but it's it's an ex exceptional document. I mean, I mean, it's an exceptional website. Um, and we think that it's only going to evolve, and it already has, since we wrote this report, um, into a much more comprehensive uh, process, all right, that can be accessed by everyone. Um, the last one that we had was ensuring funding compliance for the MWPA projects. And we went back, that's actually, we put, took that out and put that into the conclusion sections. We're talking about, um, Having some type of, of, of uh, uh, approval process at the end of each project that's done within cities to make sure that the work is done in compliance with it, the twenty percent protection for for local projects, um, and um, again, that's one of the things we want to make everybody to look at. But it's been folded into the general observations, so it kicks it kicks out and is not number three anymore. We'll discuss that, I think, later on. So that's that's about where I am. Mostly, you've seen all of this before. 
Um, I don't think it's, it needs, it's, if there are any changes you'd like to make, please go right ahead. Let me know. Or in, any questions? Thank you, Kingston. Sure. Um, so, I, uh, so thank you, thank you, Larry, for for helping. I mean, everybody that was involved in the subcommittee going forward, and you were one of them. Stephen Keys is going. I was on it, and Lucy. So, thank you all. All right. Should do we take comments from the public at this point, or can we wait till the end of this whole series? I would suggest taking them now, so that Each all item the comments should... come in on the same topic. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, if everybody's uh, asked their questions, let's open it to public comment. I'm sorry, are you calling for public comment? Yes, yes. Okay. Is there anybody at this time that would like to speak on, you're on uh, 7B, correct? Yes. The Transparency Committee Annual Statement, please raise your hand. Seeing none at this time, thank you. Uh, okay. So uh, moving on to the financial committee report. Um, I, I can take that, but before I get into the questions that were um, you know, highlighted by the um, committee that put this together, uh, one of the things I wanna ask the committee to think about is that some of these questions arise as a result of the timing between when this report is published and the period in which we're reviewing. So, um, you know, a good example, although neither one of us reported out on, you know, say policy, financial policies and procedures, for example, you know, that was um, one of the recommendations in, in this report, but yet they've already done it now. By the time the report comes out, yeah. it will no longer be necessary for a recommendation. So do we do this as of 6.30.21 or do we look at it as, at a snapshot in time at or about the time we publish the report because it changes the way things are worded and it also changes the way the numbers are, are presented. And in a case of one thing here where, um, you know, there are questions about something reconciling or a couple things about them reconciling, it's because it's way into the new fiscal year, whereas we're looking at things as of 630 21. My instinct would be to um, take the long view and say, this is where it's sort of, this is our position from now, we've understood it. So we're not making recommendations that something be adopted when it's already been adopted. Um, on, uh, and it does offer us a chance to sort of catch up, um, even though next year's report will be on the next 21-22, uh, the 21-22, I think it it helps get us everybody an understanding of what how it began and where we are now. And if there was some overlap, you could explain that 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 came in a little bit later beyond the fiscal year. Yeah. Now you need to slow me down if you're not understanding something. Wave your hand or, or you know wave your hand. Anything like that. There there are two questions that pop up here. Um, one has to do with the, um, uh, I'll call it the unused funds at the end of fiscal 2021, 20, 20, June 30th, mm -hmm. 2021. So what the unused balance at that time is not what the unused balance was in November when the reserve, or what was it, December when the reserve was uh, proposed and and ultimately approved. So in order in order to tie all that out, we now need to review that for the next six months. You know, yeah. I, I'm not saying that can't be done. What I'm saying is that another way to possibly handle this mm -hmm. is to say that you know this this was the amount that was not spent, and if and at, at the time, at the end of the fiscal year, the board had not established their reserve policy yet. And, you know, subsequently did so, you know, at the end of the calendar year 2021. And in doing so, you know, I, I, I can come up with some language as, 
to why they're different. Ultimately, what makes it different is that you've also been spending cash on 2021, 2022 uh, right. projects. So of course, you're going to end up with less of a reserve than the amount that was unspent at June 30th. Right. Yeah, they settled on three million, right? Uh, well, three. There, there was also um, what, like eight point four nine million right. set right. aside. Right. Yeah. Set aside. Right. Right. You got. You're gonna have to spin it, Larry. I think you know. It's just, not a matter of spinning. Well, I mean, write it. No, I don't mean. I mean, just write it as of the date of. Well, um, for to speak as somebody who is not super comfortable with numbers, um, and I think maybe. Um, I think many of the public would also feel the same way. When something says that 60% of the proceeds were used for X uh, and it's broken down into a smaller set of categories, it's always more comfortable to understand how, you know, is that 60% fully accounted for? If not, there's a chunk and what that chunk is, um, and that couldn't have be explained as having gone over into the next year it's in everywhere else in the report you 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 it's the formula is um of the nine of the full tax proceeds x amount which is 20 percent um was um was sent and and spent um and so it, it's just we come at, we come to the 60 percent and it's more complicated and i'm more complicated because the money wasn't spent yes All okay right. It, it says there 60% must be dedicated to core programs. It doesn't, mm. you know, this doesn't say that 60% was spent. Okay, okay. Oh, but See, another question that I had, um, where does the 10% administrative cost come out? Does it come out before the 60% is allocated or after the 60% is allocated? It's 10% of the, um, allocation the, the the well that that's one of the questions that now comes back to the first bullet it's 20 it, it's 10 percent of the budget of the so that comes out on off the top and yeah and, and that's that's the real problem with the word budget mm. it, it what are you referring to 10 percent of the sales tax proceeds or 10 percent of the expenditures or you know Budget is meaningless in the context of trying to establish what that dollar figure is. See, and that, that's all I'm asking in the first bullet is that from a board perspective or finance committee perspective, just clarify it. You know, it, it, it was probably written by somebody who wasn't thinking about that nuance at the time because it went into the enabling legislation. So, in fact, when you we asked the question in the document saying, um, how do you suggest that this gets done? And is it sort of a board issuing uh, an interpretive convention or something? It just says this is the way we are going to be handling this. Yeah, well, I didn't call anybody out or, or any group out specifically. Uh -huh. it, it basically was that it needs to be clarified. OK, but and without is there a for uh, in the finance world, when you're dealing with a large budget, you have certain conventions of interpretation. Are they standardized through the government, GAAP, the, the you know, it is, or is it up to the individual agency to determine how they're going to uh, interpret? You, you know, you, you can usually establish your own metric. Okay. But if I were to take this in the absence of any specific definition, mm -hmm. I would say the most conservative way to do it is to use, um, you know, some in this case of administrative fees, ten percent of the expenditures. Okay, um, and just to so, clarify, when when we're uh, working with the the overall budget numbers, the administrative. Um, costs uh, budget comes out of the core, so it's ten percent of the sixty percent of core. Oh, okay. Right. So, if essentially it's only fifty percent that can be spent on projects. Uh, not exactly. Not, not exactly. No. That's but, not the math. Yeah. It's ten percent or sixty percent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
But so, uh, uh, and then w uh, one other question that um, I just wanted to have explained to us because we aren't, um, we aren't very sophisticated, meaning me. Uh, when you talk about the general ledger, what is that? That, that is the financial detail. That is the line item detail that goes into uh, you know, a financial system, whether it's on paper or electronic. Okay, so, so if you buy something and it costs you $100, you, you, you reduce your cash and you increase it by the type of expense that you spent the money on. Okay, so that's, it's the balance sheet or the sort of... No, no. no. Um, it's neither the balance sheet or the income statement. Okay. It, it's just the, the recorded financial transaction, which okay. could affect the income statement, the balance sheet, or both, okay. depending on what type of transaction it is. So, so example, Larry, yes. Is it in in my day to day? Is that sort of like my checkbook? Why I'm making those entries? Your checkbook only represents your cash, which is the a balance sheet item. Okay, so if you spend cash, you're reducing an asset, which is a balance sheet item, but you spent it on something, let's say groceries, then you would have an expense called groceries, but that's an income statement item. Okay. So the income statement is the money you earn and the money you spend. Whereas the balance sheet is a snapshot in time that represents what you own, what you owe, and the net of it being hopefully positive, uh, what you're worth. Okay. Well, I, 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 I think maybe we'll leave it as it is. If it's a generally understood term, general ledger is just understood to be the, um, the basic day-to-day uh, -day accounting. There's no layman's euphemism for that? Well, I, I, I can, uh, let, let's put it this way. The whole first third of that sentence, each one of those words represents know. something. I you know, I, I, I explained to you what general ledger is. I can change it to transactions. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, with the review, though, there's that's nuanced. Okay. I am not doing an audit. I am yeah. not trying to determine whether yeah. the information is true or not. Right. Okay. So, so all I'm doing is, is looking at an evaluation. I'm, I'm evaluating whether the financial transactions you know, line up to how it's being presented. My detail should add up to the reports that you see, say, on the annual report. OK, okay. Um, you know, if anybody ever did the same thing, they would find the same thing I did. You know, um, there, there were a couple minor things, but totally immaterial. I mean, like under $200 on one item, you know, on a, on a $19 million in, in, in revenue. And it might've just been a timing thing where the report was produced, but there might've been an adjustment that had to have been made for the um, fiscal year books. And that happens quite often. You know, because I'm looking at this information, you know, um, no, I, I take that back. I was going to say I was looking at this information pre-closing, but it wasn't. It was post-closing. So it's possible that the report could have been written pre-closing. But again, a couple hundred dollars off, I can reconcile it. I know where it should have went. It just didn't get reported that way. And when you look at the, the dollars being carried out in the financial report, which was in thousands or millions, it wouldn't have shown up there. Anyway. It's, is it a rounding error almost? No, it wouldn't have been. A, it was a specific item I found okay. in the transactions. Yeah. Okay. So let's go back to whether you have to do a rewrite or not. I think we have to pick a point in time maybe now, in which you update to this point, whatever information you have to. 
Is, are you going to change anything substantially in what you what you've got written? Um, not substantially. I think I would rewrite things to kind of find that balance between okay, we're looking at a fiscal year in, but we're mm -hmm. trying to make a statement literally eight nine months later. Yep. In which case, a lot of things have changed. Pat, yeah. did you? Did you? Want uh, to yeah, I it put my hand up because I'm sorry. Um, I, I think, and and I'm not. I'm pretty comfortable with numbers, but I'm not as uh, conversant with general ledgers and all the exact terminology. But uh, and Kingston is is bringing back up what I was going to that I think Larry asked a very basic question of is this a snapshot in time that ended on June 30th, 2021, or is this us looking back at it now? And it just seems to me, and uh, Larry, tell me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me that you could, we could do the numbers the actual financial numbers based on June 30th, 2021, but not write recommendations as if we were stupid and didn't know what had happened in the meantime. And we could kind of be clear about saying that. We could say, you know, these numbers were written based on, on such and such a date. And then, then, you know, we, could acknowledge things have transpired in the meantime, but here are our lingering uh, suggestions. I don't know, does that make sense? I, I can see where you're going with, you know, your thoughts. Okay. You know, the, the audit is gonna come in as a snapshot in time. Yes. You know, that, it, that's also, you know, nine months later. Yeah, a very late snapshot, very long yeah. one. Yeah, well, it, it's still gonna be, an attestation and, you know, uh, a, a look at, they're looking at everything up to June 30th, 2021. You know, I, I mean, I've seen some cities where I was writing reports for, you know, the Marin County Council of Mayors and Council Members. And, you know, a couple cities didn't even have their, their audits done at, at June 30th, a year later. Yikes. Well, I just, to me, it seems like I hate to think of Larry having to redo all these yeah. numbers. I assume the numbers that are in there now are based on the end of that fiscal year. Oh, and we, yeah. we go with those numbers because that's the honest numbers. Then uh, maybe we make a statement that, you know, this is as of this date, but then we don't have to make recommendations as if we didn't know what has happened in the meantime. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that's that's fine. And if if the the one other question that's in red, it is only there because I think um there was such a an I a typo. I couldn't work out what the word was instead of should should be something for the calendar year on a cash basis is the uh, and it, it, my copy had an error. In that spreadsheet. Yeah, it, it's a reconcile. Okay, should be reconciled. Yeah. And, and that's something that Mark has already either fixed or, or very close to fixing because I talked to him about that two months ago. What happens is that the expenditures in this area were kept on a calendar year basis. And it was also kept on a cash basis. Yikes. Okay, so oh. what, what the, the, the authority oh. has is that they're on a June 30th cal, uh, fiscal year and it's on a, an accrual basis. So it, it was impossible to, tr not impossible, it, it was really difficult to try and match up the timing of that. Jesus. Man. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think that sort of covers, but uh, just, to, just to revisit the, the most complicated one. Um, so we're gonna say this is a snapshot as of June 30th. Um, but can we give a description so that subsequent to June 30th, we, we know because you know, time has passed and we were watching that this and this and this happened. Um, and so therefore we can, we can 
make it clear make it clear that you know the numbers the percentages work or is that not even something we should be attempting no that I, I think we're fine with it the only one that i really need to just change the way it's written is the uh second bullet where it's flagged is this is 44 percent. what happened to the rest okay all yeah. right um good you know the the other one uh where it had the typo where it, it left out be reconciled yeah that's already that's that's really the issue that created that has already been resolved okay or okay. or in the process of it i would think it sounded like mark was really close to having that done because he knew about it the same time i did well, we can include it as a description rather than a recommendation. We can simply yeah. say this is this is what happened at that time. Yeah, and as far as the fiscal policies go, I mean, our recommendations is to, to um, you know int reintroduce the ones that hadn't been approved. But as of the last finance committee meeting, they've they've done that. All of them, every single one has uh, now been. Yeah, I, I believe so. I didn't um, go back and check them off against the list that I had. Okay, well, that, that uh, leaves and, none, yeah. no recommendations out of the financial report. Yeah, and do you know if they actually covered everything that was uh, introduced but not approved in December of 2020? They don't, but I'm happy to check in with Mark and get back to you all. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, I can look at that list from the agenda again, because I have a list of uh, what was still outstanding. So, I, yeah, that's, that's yeah, fine. I do too, I'm somewhere, good. yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Larry. That uh, I think clears up some stuff. Yeah. Um, and we, we, oh, anything else? Oh, no, I was going to say, you know, by and large for a first year organization, you know, I, I, I thought that things were pretty clean. It was easy. There weren't that many transactions to begin with. Mm. So, um, you know, uh, they, they got off to a good start. Alicia did a good job putting that together. Do you want to put something like that in a, as a general observation at the beginning of this section? I can do that. I think that, that, that that's going to bring it home to people that are reading it. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Really appreciate your work on this. It's so all him. It's all him. Not me. Yes. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> um, do we want to move to let's uh, public comment if there is any. At this time, would anybody like to speak on the financial report? Please raise your hand. I see no hands raised. Thank you. Okay. All right. So moving on then to the, um, oh, well, this is the overall annual, oh, excuse me. This is the work plans committee report. Um, so Rebecca. So, um, Starting on page, oh, that's interesting. My copy has two pages six, on it. Six, six. Four, six and, the, oh. and 14 at the bottom. Wait a second. That's because no, the not right. whole no. agenda package is ah, page of course it is. the whole agenda. But gotcha. It's 14. It's so six picture. in the report. Right. Um, so what we did on the um, work plan was to look at it in the, uh, we took out the core. So you'll see that at the beginning and the only core projects that were done were for the um, Fire Safe Moran uh, and then defensible space. So core projects are 60% of the entire plan. Um, and that was the Fire Safe Moran. Um, defensible space, which is 20%. And then uh, the local projects, community level wildfire mitigation projects. The bulk of what we did was to take a look at the local projects. Um, those were, div we divided up amongst the five zones and uh, we divided up the projects and a person took responsibility for each of the zones to take a look at all the projects, make sure that the projects were all completed, that they were um, within the authority of the MWPA. Uh, and I forget what the last one was. And they had the attestation. Oh yes, it didn't have an attest attestation. Um, so the 
bulk the bulk of the work really went into justifying the projects themselves. Were they uh, within the authority of the uh, JPA? Did they get done? Um, so there's a section for each zone and you can take a look at the projects and you can tell by reading the um, report whether or not all the projects were completed, uh, if they were completed on time or if they carried over, uh, were they within um, the authority of the JPA? And then we had some uh, recommendations based on the work that went on for the projects. Does the committee have any questions? It looks good. Really good, thank you. Okay. Let's see. Well, that was too easy. They're gonna have one more shot at it when we finalize it. We're gonna bring it back one more time. Yeah. I'll mention one thing that um, the chipper program is shifting from Fire Safe Marin to the MWPA. And I think that's a big change in what's coming or what's what's happening now. That's just that one comment. Thank you. You know, that brings up a point. Uh, Lucy, you're on mute. You're on mute, Lucy. You're talking. <laughs> Checking away. <laughs> Nothing's coming out. And you're thinking I'm talking over your over your voice. That's okay. Uh, I, one question that I wanted to ask Anne um, is that this is, as we said, an, a working draft, and we're going to come back with a great deal more information than we might have reorganized and added some recommendations and deleted some. In other words, it'll be significantly different by the next draft. Does that mean we we are requ required to do a first reading of the next draft and then an approval of it a month later? Or uh, could we, so uh, we, we, do, we would necessarily have to do, um, we couldn't present the new version for approval by the committee without them having a review of it first. Is that, I mean, with a, a, a whole delay uh, period. If you see what I'm asking. <laughs> uh, in other words, does it need to happen at two separate meetings or can yes. it happen? Yeah. Um, uh, Larry, you seemed like you had the answer there. I'm not sure that you yeah. need two separate meetings. Yeah, this is not a, yeah. a resolution or an ordinance. Okay, right. good. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it falls under that threshold. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah. It's, it's just a it's just a report. So as we have what we can we can revise it substantially, send it out to everybody, and have a vote for people to to approve it, and that would be sufficient. Did it, do you even need the vote? Would, would I think it, it would be vote? good. It's yeah, actually, yeah. okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. And, and, the whole year. So and then depending on the timing of the audit. Um, and if we wanted to get it out quickly, if we had done our bit and the audit didn't raise any particular issues, um, could we even have a special meeting to approve it, um, to get it out quickly? Or, uh, I mean, would that, would that be a reasonable thing to do? Um, be, before we do that, is this committee required? I, th uh, I think this committee was required to review and comment on the audit. Yes, no, yeah. we're waiting for the audit, but yeah. assuming the audit comes and it doesn't raise any very large and complicated questions that we might want to spend some time, if we re review it and approve it, uh, the audit is fine, we put that as a chunk into the report, and then um, we'd like, if we wanted to release it fairly quickly after that, I'm proposing we might have a special meeting to do that, um, just so we don't have to wait a full month, but there's no telling on the timing because of the audit. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm fine with that. Okay. What What would the committee like to do in terms of reviewing the audit? Good question. I mean, I, I, yeah. I know what I would do, but that's what would you I recommend? 
I mean, if I were placed in a fiduciary position, I would want to make sure I read the report and to make sure that there weren't any, uh, let's just say anything that might have been brought to the attention, brought to the attention of, in this case, is going to the board where they might need to take uh, corrective action on something. Right. Yeah, you got to read it. Everyone's got it. It's a basic, it's a basic sign up, but we have that due diligence requirement. Everybody. Okay. And did you want to say something? How long is the audit likely to be? Ooh, I, I think for this organization, hopefully it's not more than 30 pages, yeah. but it, it <laughs> could be double or triple that depending on how it's presented. We don't have a lot of funds and things like that, but I'm not sure if they're going to end up reviewing and then breaking down each of the different programmatic expenditures as separate financial statements. I have a suggestion because uh, there are two people sitting here in this grid uh, who have experience reading these kinds of things. Uh, I think uh, I agree that we all should read it, but Perhaps uh, Kingston and Larry can read it with the expert eye and uh, tell the rest of us what we should be looking at particularly or yeah. something to that effect. Uh, because I'm afraid that my own eye isn't going to catch everything it should. Yeah, we can do that as the finance committee. And ah, yes. I would say at a yeah. minimum, what the rest of the committee would need to look at is the management letter and, you know, anything that they place as, a, uh, you know, an executive summary at the front. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, so did we go to public comment on the, um, oh, on the report work, uh, the work, work plans plan. report section? We have not yet. Um, okay. At this time, would anybody like to speak on the uh, annual work plan for the MWPA? Please raise your hand. Seeing none at this time, thank you. Okay. Um, all right, then we, we can move on to information items. None. No. I have. Oh, sorry, Kingston. Well, I don't, I don't know if it's an information item, but um, Max Pere looks like he's going to be on the Mill Valley City oh, Council. Right. Yes. But, but he's got nobody is running against him. God, what a, what a lack of... of, <laughs> of you got to wonder, what are those, where that, are those people? Yeah, and where are those people? That, man? Where, yeah, where's the civic involvement? Anyway, Max, <laughs> by default, it looks like you're going to get kicked off the COC. All right. So I just thought I'd let you know. So we we we're gonna miss you. All right. He can appoint his own successor. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Spotswood right. is gonna have a field day with this one. He always goes into his thing about how when people run unopposed and it's yeah. so bad for democracy and and it's his town. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's, it's good old Mill Valley. All right. God, not even going to have an election. And, so. and speaking of succession, you know, what this really brings up is you have, you have people like Kingston and Larry that really understand how to read these things. And when they step down, how can we ensure that the, we get people that have this, we as, you know, the MWPA, because we may be gone by then too, that have this specific expertise. And I think that's something that needs to be vetted. It's gonna be really important. If, if you have nine people and no one has financial expertise, it's gonna to be tough. Well, Larry's brought it up with yeah, the board. I've already told the executive committee that. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> so. but, but they can't make a new category of um, appointment you know, the, the JPA lays out the, you know, the constituent sources. Right. Um, so uh, how would, the, I guess it would just be the, in the selection of the candidates that pick somebody who had more financial experience than somebody else. 
I, I would think almost by definition, the taxpayer representative would naturally have some uh, financial expertise. And, and we're very lucky that we have Larry Chu here. Um, but I, you know- I don't see, have that accounting background, he does. Yeah. I, mean, I agree with what you're saying, but I'm just- But, but I, I think that that's really something that the board who is seeking yeah. out the members has to be co conscious of. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, Lori has her hand raised, by the way. Oh, yes. I, I just wanted you to know that um, I did check the grid, um, Pat, at the very first on the video, and I fixed it. So I know how to fix it now. So now when you are an attendee, you will be able to see uh, what we see, the whole grid. Oh, good. You'll be able to see the host page. I made it where the host. Yeah. Good. That that's that's great, and I hope you can check that before every meeting because it's certainly much more pleasant to see the grid than to always just see the speaker. So thanks so much for if finding I don't that. Remind me, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you a note in the queue. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. So, any other information items? We had. Uh, I. Uh, we had asked uh, if we could get a uh, educational session on the finances. Did Larry, did you and Mark ever talk about that? Uh, we didn't talk about it, but I, I think it's just one of those things we need to get on the agenda. Probably the best time to do that is once the report's done. Right. Yeah. yeah, it would have been nice to have it before the... Uh, before we all had to read the audit. But uh, yeah, we, I, I guess we, we can do it. I mean, I'm open to doing it any, any time. I don't know if it needs to be noticed or anything since we have the full participation of the board or, or the committee. And we don't have a uh, agenda item for future. Oh yeah, we do. Sorry, we, next. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll 30 seconds. So we can move on to that. Uh, I, I did have one small information item, mm -hmm. and this goes back to moving the moving ESP off the MWPA website, or at least we have a website now for oh. ESP. It's, it's in development. I'm the webmaster, so that should warn you. It's taking time. Uh, <laughs> it, it's looking good, but, you know, we're trying to get our content together and all before we really announce it. So wow. that, that is, if anyone's wondering, you know, you go, oh, why is ESP still on the MWPA? We are working. We, 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 ha we have moved quite far. We have a subcommittee and, and we try to meet uh, weekly. In fact, we have a coming up. Hmm. Again Excellent. Yeah, That's right. Do you have a beta version we can look at? I don't know. It's, it's, it's a little early. Oh, it's, okay. Uh, it's, it Good. really is. Cool. We, That's we quite an undertaking. Good, good yeah. for you guys. We good need to help. get it right and, yeah. and make some decisions. For example, I, I actually I could get into this because we, you also have biomass and biomass, the biomass collaborative is, is connected, but we're going to work with the Marin Resource Conservation District. We've decided that that page should be with them since they, they are behind this. So these are the, so we've got to move the material we have now that I threw up there from you know, pieces and bits and pieces we have, and we're going to put that all together. So it's all coming together. Jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, yeah, it's coming together. Okay. Look who showed. Look who showed up. Hi, Max. <laughs> nice to see your face. <laughs> well, barely my face. I've I've had I've been battling the sun, and I thought it was it had gone down enough that I could uh, appear on video. But apparently, yeah, you look like you're in a window. <laughs> a little bit. Okay, so um, have we covered the request regarding future agenda items? Because um, uh, we asked for the financial lesson. Um, anything else that we would ask for for the next? I have the assignments down. Oh, yes. It, uh, yes, assignments. Uh, Financial. Oh, and and 
what about uh, Rebecca had something mentioned something about a site visit somewhere? So yeah. go look at something like like the uh, Greater Ross Valley fuel break project. Shady fuel break in ten, in five years time. It's going to take that long, isn't it? But before and after. <laughs> oh. You want to go crawling around the Scotch broom? Okay. Well, no, because <laughs> I'd be watching all you guys crawl around. I would roll around. <laughs> I carry a chair with me. Uh, God. I, I know. Just, I told you. <laughs> okay. You, uh, actually, that brings up the point of, yes, it would be great to see something like that, but it would need to be ADA compliant, which yep. is going to significantly yeah. reduce the uh, Re yeah. Rebecca it would need to be ADA re compliant or we can get a whole bunch of handsome firemen that's <laughs> right oh uh -huh. thank you Pat <laughs> <laughs> and there it is right, the public record I so appreciate right. that all right well then um that kind of wraps everything up um so if none of you have anything else then I uh I could adjourn the meeting Okay. Adjourned. Okay. 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 Been fun. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you, everyone. Bye.